Well, this drill basically takes away all of the non-essential parts to hitting a golf ball. You don't have to look like Dustin Johnson at the top or Victor Hovland at the top or Matt Wolf at the top. You have to get the club into a delivery position that looks kind of like kind of like this, and then you have to hit the ball kind of like this, and then you have to exit the club kind of like that to hit the ball at an elite level. Okay, so today we're back with Director of Instruction Ryan Hager here at Plainfield Country Club. And one thing I've been struggling with, Ryan, is getting a little bit too flippy at my moment of impact. And one thing I've learned from playing this game long enough is that impact is so vitally important, but it also kind of can show it might be an indication of something else that's wrong. So as much as I try to fix this, I don't know if it's my rotation, I'm not sure what it is, but the good news is I do have this hack motion. I've been messing around with this. I love that it gives me that feedback and I'm seeing what my wrist angles are, not only at the top, but also at impact. And that's where I'm finding some of that issues. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you and I were chatting before we got this video going about struggling with kind of a flippiness where yeah. the club head is, is sort of passing the hands relatively early. I think for lots of folks that can start on your first try swinging a golf club because you show up to the range and all you want is the ball to go up in the air. And I think it logically makes a lot of sense to try to lift or help the ball up in the air. And that's, like I said, conceptually a big problem for lots of people is they're trying to get the ball up. Um, and that leads to sort of this impact position where maybe the body is back or weight is back or they're under rotated, but for sure you see the, the shaft sort of leaning the wrong way, yeah. which adds a lot of loft. I suppose that would make the ball go up in the air, but it won't make it go very far. It'll make you hit it, um, high on the face and hit the ground early and things like that. So um, kind of a suboptimal impact position to arrive in. And I think it's a little counterintuitive to that person to start thinking of trying to almost drive the ball into the ground with the shaft leaning more forwards and the club moving downwards as it makes contact. And so conceptually, that's a very different, a very different thing. You know, this sensors on your lead hand and so there's a uh, cup and bow are also words that kind of get used for this flexed or extended position, right? So cupped is when the wrist is more extended like this and flexed is when the wrist is more bowed like this. And then in the middle for golf purposes, we'll call that neutral, but this actually is kind of towards flexion. So we can train that in the uh, practice setting with a drill. So I learned this one from another hack motion guy, Scott Caux, and um, this is a drill and sort of a swinging pattern that, uh, again, I learned from him in his certification. He calls it carving the duck. And uh, <laughs> I remember when he told the group of us, we're all teaching pros, that's the name of the drill. We all kind of looked around like, what the heck could that mean? And um, he, he kind of was like, well, how do you carve a duck out of a block of wood? And everyone's like, I have no idea. And he goes, you just whittle away all of the parts of the block that are not a duck. He's like, you take all the non-duck parts away until you're left with a duck. And we still looked around like, what the heck does that mean? He's like, well, this drill basically takes away all of the non-essential parts to hitting a golf ball, right? You don't have to look like Dustin Johnson at the top or Victor Hovland at the top or Matt Wolf at the top. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get the club into a delivery position that looks kind of like kind of like this, and then you have to hit the ball kind of like this, and then you have to exit the club kind of like that to hit the ball at an elite level. And so this drill focuses on those parts of the swing, kind of like the below the waist uh, delivery positions and stuff like that. So you whittle away all the kind of the weird things that people might have going on at the top, and it focuses you more on how you're delivering your hands, your wrists. Um, so your would arms. you say if we looked at those guys for as many differences as we talked about, that they may have, yep. as different as they are here, they're more similar once they reach this position? Yeah, you don't have that many options uh, for how to have your body positioned and club positioned as you go from shaft parallel to impact and then to shaft parallel on this side. Gotcha. I should say, you don't have that many options to hit it like a <laughs> golf ball is supposed to be hit. You can get away with a lot of things, but you know you might never get to the scoring average or handicap that you want to if you're constantly struggling with kind of a overly extended, flippy impact. It'll work sometimes, but right. it and I probably know will fail you under pressure. And that's just it. I yeah. know that this, when I do get this way, it's a compensation. It could be for something else, but let's carve that duck. 
So <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the next step here? Yeah, so it's a pretty straightforward drill. Um, you you're going to step out a, so you can you want to sure, demonstrate? Sure, I'll, I'll give you the quick demonstration here first. Um, it starts with getting into your normal setup, right? If you have some issues with your setup, I just take care of that first. But um, assuming you've got a, a decent setup over the ball, you're going to start with the lower body. And we're basically just going to try to feel and get yourself into the different positions that um, happen at impact versus setup. But I think a lot of people might not know that setup and impact are different. Um, and so learning how to kind of get yourself here requires a little lateral slide of the pelvis, some rotation of the pelvis, um, a little bit of a downward kind of move with the torso like this, a little bit of rotation from the torso, and then you'll have all kinds of freedom to move your hands and move the shaft in front of the ball. Um, I think a lot of people have this concept of getting their hands in front of the ball and they're trying to do it like this like holding the club off? Or dragging the club forwards or, yeah. Um, and really those, those kind of impact alignments with the wrists and the club, I think, come from larger muscle groups kind of moving sort of the way that they would move if you were throwing a ball. Yeah. Um, and so it helps you kind of get a sense of like, where does everything need to go? Not, not just, I know the club has to go over here, but how does the club go over there? So. You'll kind of rehearse that a few times. You'll go set up, impact. I feel my weight a little forwards. I feel my body kind of looking down range. Um, I obviously can see the left wrist here in a pretty neutral or flat position. It's not crazy bowed. You can see mm -hmm. how that closes the face a lot. It's also not extended, which kind of opens the face a lot. So I'm able to like keep the club face pretty square as I do this. And then once I'm here for five, six seconds, I'm gonna swing back and swing through. And the objective on this is to kind of keep my hands and arms locked almost. Like I'm, I'm really driving this motion with body rotation. Mm -hmm. I'm not shifting side to side very much. I'm sort of staying on my left side and trying to rotate Back and that's there. starting from that simulated impact. Position. Yes. So the swing will begin at impact. You'll hit it at impact, and you'll almost finish at impact. Gotcha. But your body's just kind of rotating. So with the biofeedback, you can you can kind of see like what kind of a range are we looking for, and if you get it into those. So spots. as I start to move towards what I think is a, a good impact <coughs> position, like I said, I'm I'm moving the lower body, and it's interesting to me is too is I don't feel like I'm pressing my handle forward. It's just as I move my hips, it's kind just my hands have to <laughs> like yeah. it has to go right. there. Whereas before, I would say, I would, I knew this is a good position, I would kind of force it. Sure, right, and that's not, yeah. not a good way to do it. It no. usually will lead to shanks and Which I've been chunks there. and all you kinds know of I've things been like there. that, I do. There's a difference between the lower body going forwards and like doing this. Yeah. I don't want you to get like your sternum crazy forwards. It's more so your pelvis like sliding till it gets over your left foot. Yep. And then that turn kind of centers you yeah, because then this is how I start to feel off balance. Right. This I still feel balanced. Yes. Yep. Okay, so I'll just I'll sh I'm gonna shift there, yep. and then start to rotate. Great. And then this will be kind of like there. -ish. And that's that staying down Great. on the ball, right? Yep. So as I as I looked up there, I saw minus 12 in the flexion department. So that's pretty flexed. It got you into a pretty flat position. And you know, as you get your hands and arms more forwards, the face is going to open. So we do need that flexion to happen to kind of mm -hmm. close and square up the face a little bit. Yeah, I see how that face can just, if right. I just do this. And that's why that getting the move. shaft to lean forwards purely by itself is like a harmful thing to a lot of people because they get the, a lot of people have an open face to begin with. And so getting their hands way in front of the ball opens it even more. So like this, this allows thing. you to get it kind of into that situation and then also square it up. Gotcha. Which so we're letting really the body big. move the hands forward and get this. <clears throat> yeah, and then all you have to focus on is the face. You know, as your body kind of gets into these good positions, the face will open. Your job is to close the face, and that's kind of what, there you go. Yeah. So, so now then, we're yeah, to hit from what that we'll position. start with is a practice swing or two. Okay. You shouldn't get into impact for like three minutes. It should be like you go here, impact, one, two, three, four. Feel it and go, yeah. type of thing. Yeah, okay. so you won't be frozen there for a long time. It's gonna be a pretty uh, quick visit to impact, and then you'll go back and through, kind of staying on your left side. All right, so we'll go to impact. So shift. Yep. 
turn. Great. Feel it good. A little one, more shift if you can. More shift. There you go. Great. One, two, three. So obviously not as much mobility from that spot. Yeah, and but it's just not meant rotating to be done, the body. Yeah, it's not meant to be done super fast at first. So, shift. on these practice swings, just give me a little bit of like a divot or a scrape on the ground. There you go. And then let's see what happens with the ball. So we're gonna do that shift, rotate, slide a little more pelvis. Good. So when you do that, we're gonna kind of keep this back here. You should feel a pretty good stretch all I down do. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then get that face a little more closed. One, Good. two, three. Great. Phase two is pretty simple. You just make the turn a little bigger and a little faster. And then phase three of this, I often then change the name of the drill to the Matt Wolf drill. And I don't want people thinking I'm going to tell everyone to take it back like this, but he's got that little sort of rhythm move that he does right before he goes. So instead of starting your swing from impact. You're gonna go into impact, back to normal, and then you try to feel where you ended up, right? Wow. You try to use that sensation. <clears throat> so it still gives us an ball. ingrained feeling, right. but we're not starting the right. swing from there. So here we go, so shift, rotate that flexion, feel it, awesome. come yep. back. Really good. Might have gone a little left on you, but that's good. You hit this ball 140 in the air, and it says optimal would have been 130. So it's like extremely efficient to swing that way. You hit down on the ball three degrees, yep. and you de-lofted the club down to 24 degrees. Right here, it's telling you the average eight iron, which here's it is, it should be about 39. Yep. So you mm -hmm. took 15-ish degrees off of the club with forward shafting through proper wrist angles and body motion. And the, and the hack motion is indicating that I'm still too extended, but very little. It's only three degrees. Yeah. So it's much and closer to where I've been in the past. So you have a little bit of a strong left hand grip. Mm -hmm. You're cool to live at oh, okay. three degrees of extension. If you have a really weak grip, someone who holds the club more like a John Rahm, yep. if John Rahm swung like that, the ball would go 40 yards shorter than usual and way to the right. So John Rahm plays with much more flexion in his left wrist as he gets to impact. He has to crank this a lot because of the way he holds the club. Um, you know, the tour range is somewhere between 10 degrees extended and 10 degrees flexed. You're in that range for sure. And because of your grip strength, you're probably okay to be in that neck of the woods. And that's the benefit, yeah. guys, we said about working with a coach because even though half motion <laughs> is great about suggesting those ranges, you can go in there and dial them up and change them if your coach wants you to be in a slightly different range. So. That's, that's great to know. Yeah. All right, Ryan, thank you so much. Another great drill for us to put the reps in and that's work right. on. And guys, definitely check out Hack Motion because it does give that feedback. We really haven't found anywhere else. So definitely check that out. Give Ryan a look. We'll link to all of his uh, social media and everything down in the video description. Ryan, thanks again. Absolutely.